welcome to the Sterling Heights Public Library. My name is Brent, and today we're going to make polenta. So, polenta. You ever heard of grits? Well, there's not a big difference between polenta and grits. Basically, what we're talking about is um, ground corn uh, that is cooked uh, in liquid um, to form a porridge. So, we're going to start out today, we're going to make a savory version. So I've got some chicken stock here. I got about three cups of that. I got some whole milk. I'm going to add a little bit of that. I've got a cup of uh, grits. These are the old-fashioned kind, not the quick cooking. Got about a half a cup of grated cheese here. This is Asiago. I got a little salt and pepper. So stick with me for a minute here. We're going to add a little bit more milk to this to bring it up to a total of four cups. Because your ratio on this stuff is four cups of liquid to one cup of dry. Add this to pan here. Take it over to the stove and bring it up to a simmer. So once your liquid comes up to a low boil, we're going to go ahead and add one cup of your grits in there and give it a stir bring this back up to a simmer now you're gonna to have to cook this for about 20 minutes and you're going to want to keep it relatively low I'm gonna add a pinch of salt and a couple grains of pepper and you're going to need to stir this fairly regularly during the process, not necessarily through the whole thing, but especially as it thickens and gets closer to the end, you're going to have to stir it. So otherwise, it will stick and it will scorch. So your exact timing isn't the real tell on this. You're looking for a thickness, and you want to make sure that it's fully cooked. So you know, go ahead and taste it. But when it's starting to look like this, and your bubbles are coming slow and kind of thick. I'm going to go ahead and dump that cheese right in there. And stir that through quick. Make sure it's nice and melty. And that's going to disperse all kinds of good flavor through there. So we've got that cheesy polenta here. We're going to go ahead and put a few spoons of that in right at the bottom of the bowl. And you're gonna ask, well, what's the difference between polenta and grits? And I'll tell you what a chef told me one time, guy I used to work for, it was about 20 bucks a plate. So, remember those lamb shanks we were talking about a little while back? So there's a lamb shank right there. We're gonna lay that right in there. And I'm gonna get some of those nice vegetables that we did with that. And a little bit of that sauce with the wine in it. Here we've got polenta with slow cooked lamb shank. So when talking about grits and polenta, let's talk a little bit about some of the other corn products out there. So I've got three different things lined up here for you. I have got some masa, which is a corn flour. This is a very fine grind right here. I've got some cornmeal right down here in the middle. This is a uh, coarser grind than a flour, but it is a lot uh, finer than the grits down here on the end. And I've got some yellow cornmeal and I've got some white cornmeal. This is entirely up to you what you prefer. Um, you can use this a lot of different ways. And then I've got the grits down here that we touched on um, before. Um, so this here is a nice neutral starch. You can use this a million different ways. This is not simply a breakfast cereal. Uh, you can use this um, in the same way that you would use potatoes or rice in a lot of different ways. Um, We've already talked about how to make a, what they call a soft polenta, and I'm going to show you how to make um, a different version of that as well here. So let's talk very briefly about um, the way that uh, some of these things are treated as well. So your masa down here and your grits are both generally treated with an alkaline solution. They soak the corn first before they redry it and then grind it. Cornmeal is not treated that way. Why do they do that? Well, it does alter the flavor a little bit, but more than anything, it adjusts, um, makes some, some minor changes to the way that the protein is set up uh, in, the, in the corn. 
and it's easier for the human body to digest and absorb the nutrition that way. Um, it's a very old traditional technique. So we're going to make up some plain grits right now. And I've got four cups of water in here at the boil. I'm going to add one cup of the dried grits. Give it a stir. Add a healthy pinch of salt here. And then we're going to cook these for about 15 to 20 minutes, stirring frequently to keep them from sticking and scorching to the bottom. So our grits are ready, and right now they are perfectly servable. You could set these alongside some fried eggs or stir in a little bit of cheddar cheese and scatter a little bit of uh, scallion on there. Maybe serve them with a little bit of hot sauce sprinkled over the top. They're very good that way. But what we're going to do is set them up so that, and this works well with anything left over uh, as well. We're going to set these things up that, so that you can pan fry them or grill them. I'm going to take a loaf pan here. I just sprayed that with a little bit of nonstick spray just to make it easier to get them out of there. I am going to set these in here. We're going to wrap it with a little plastic wrap. We're going to stick it in the fridge overnight. And tomorrow I'll unmold them, slice it, and pan fry it show you. So this has been chilling overnight. I got the plastic wrap off of it and I am going to just drop that right on there. I put a paper towel under it just to catch any extra moisture that might come off of that because a little condensation from the plastic. So we're going to take this and we are going to slice it about well, it's probably about three quarters of an inch wide. Take it over and pan fry it in a little butter. So I got my skillet on the about medium heat. Now I'm preheating it. We're going to throw in about a tablespoon of butter and just spread that around, get it melted. So once that butter is fully melted and it starts to sizzle a little bit, it's about ready. So we're going to take this and we're just going to drop that in there. We're going to let this go for probably three minutes aside until uh, it's had a chance to start browning a little bit. If you move it too early, it can get really delicate. We'll get a little browning on it. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. A little optimistic on three minutes. Uh, it's been closer to ten, but you don't want to rush this. For one thing, you don't want to scorch the butter. So Take your time. There we go. Give us about another eight or ten minutes on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and plate this up. I'm gonna take a couple pieces of this polenta here. I'm just gonna lay them in a dish. Like so. And we're going kind of home style here. So I've got some ham and beans here. Just gonna lay that right in there like so, sprinkle it with a little bit of scallion, add it with a little hot sauce. That is dinner. Now, this can be very upscale. Uh, one of the places I used to work, we used to grill this stuff with ducks, so don't think for a second that it's just home style. Um, polenta, give it a shot. Uh, one of the neat things about this, it's made with corn, gluten-free. 